obviously uh, is a name that's international, but are you looking elsewhere, information technology, companies that might be smaller or, or not have the kind of presence that U.S. investors are aware of? So we want to look at all the capital markets for potential ideas, regardless of the country that they're located, as well as regardless of the size of the company. Unfortunately, for a tech investor, and I'm part of our team that's responsible for, for our technology investments, there's not too many opportunities to invest in good companies outside the U.S. So obviously, the U.S. is the epicenter for, for much of uh, technology yeah. investment opportunities. And it's somewhat rare that we find an opportunity to invest in a good company at attractive valuations in the non-U.S. markets. SAP was, was one of the, the occasional opportunities uh, to make an investment like that. We've been in investing internationally for 20 years. Obviously, SAP is a big part of the potential market for us to invest in. Uh, this is the first time that we've ever owned the stock because this is the first time that the valuations have been attractive enough. Uh, what about the telecom sector? That's another area you're focused on. Yes, so telecom is a very interesting opportunity. You look simply at what has happened in Europe, and you know that a good value investor needs to be doing his or her homework to look for, for opportunities. Uh, telecom has been a disastrous area for several years, uh, particularly outside the U.S. We have found interesting opportunities uh, both in Europe as well as Asia. So in Europe, we own Vodafone. Now, I'm sure you know that they're one of the largest mobile operators in the world. You may not know that they also own a 45 per stake. 45% stake in Verizon Wireless. And we feel that this is an asset that's significantly undervalued uh, when you invest in it through Vodafone, which tends to be depressed by being associated uh, with the European telecom sector. In Asia, we found opportunities in both Japan and South Korea. So in Japan, we own KDDI. So KDDI is a business that benefits from the fact that they have both fixed line and mobile uh, infrastructure. One of their competitors, SoftBank, only has primarily uh, mobile assets. And their other competitor, the NTT Group, has both. But for regulatory reasons, they're not prevented to co-market these products. This gives KDDI a significant advantage. On top of that, we have a valuation that's as attractive as, as any in the sector with, with uh, PEs um, around 10 or 11 and EV EBITDA multiples around four times.